Well, hi, Freeman. How are you doing now, Hannah? I am good. So we're a long way away from one another physically. That's kind of strange, right? Yeah, if you will, then learn them. I am, yeah. And you're down, I don't know exactly where you are, but... I'm down here in a fountain, a little spot on the highway. Yeah. So what I thought about was I realized I... I looked at your guitars and I realized I thought that they weren't completely guitars. They were like objects or they were like vessels or they were like, what are they to you then? Do you, can you talk about them a bit to me? They are playable uh, spiritual things in my type of thinking and all. Uh, yeah. And some uh, of them, so the ones from the hanging tree were, yeah. Well, well, more spirit. Well, it's hard to explain because if you ain't never practiced your cult, it's hard for folks to know what I'm talking about. But mm. there's something macabre about messing with dumb instruments. But I went on to finish them anyway. But they are playable and they had uh, some designs and stuff in them that uh, I read and came from the wood being furniture. I don't know. Mm. And did you, uh, do you play your own guitars? Yeah, I uh, used to be the, the, a blues man, but uh, when the woman quit uh, singing the blues, the folks won't stop me playing the blues. And, and the blues is from when you were a child? How was it when you were a child? Do you listen to music a lot? Yeah, uh, Mr. Oscar used to make me play uh, Wild Woods Flower on his old uh, guitar he called Mr. Martin. But see, the thing about it was he kept telling me, he said, uh, once you learn to play it, you can uh, put that with anything somebody's singing and they won't know the difference. And that gone. The man told the truth. Man, <laughs> later on, as I got older and started listening and kind of feeling the music, you can use the same minor licks and major licks and everything and nobody never know the difference. It's the, so, pace, it's the pace that you apply to John Brown chords and licks and stuff. It, it ain't really what the sound said that Wildwood Flower was just the name of a song. And he liked to hear me say that. And um, so when you were a child, did you go to the, you went to the church and you heard music there or how did you hear music? Well, uh, Music back then, you said when I was a child, there was no such thing in music in the church. All them folk be in there hollering at one time, and you know what? Didn't know the deal. No lecture lights, no nothing. But uh, anyway, later on, folks start playing a little this and a little that and everything. And on down the line, they kind of got uh, nicer instruments and start singing a little better. But uh, you know, back then, when I was a child, they didn't sing nothing but slow songs would make folks cry and stuff. So, and, um, so when you were growing up, you grew up in the countryside or how did you grow up? You grew up in a village or how was it when you grew up? No, I won't never know about that village. There was plantations where uh, they had uh, several families on there, uh, take care of their fields and crops and stuff. And uh, like that right there, the man rang the bell in the morning and rang at 12 o'clock. So you didn't have to ring that. And, uh, in the evening, cause you had to work the dog. Hmm. And and your parents did they did they work in the plantations or they did other things or what did they do? Well, everybody worked on the uh, well. Now they call it farms. They call it this and that. Right? They were back then. They called it the plantation cause hmm. people didn't have too many rights. Then, you know. Yeah, and it was cotton that they were they were doing. What did that? It was cotton that they were that they were they were looking after? It, it was, was a, a, uh, I'm sorry, uh, my accent is probably really hard for you. Well, I got a bad one too. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Peter had your accent. It's he both, like both of us. It's he both of us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what they did, they, uh, they farmed, you know. The yeah. old master, he stayed in the big house and uh, he bossed everybody who worked on the farm, whole white folks and black folks and stuff. He had everybody a certain amount of mules, which were two, and a house and a cone thing to feed the mules and so many acres they had to do. Everybody had a certain amount of acres they had to do, and uh, at the end of the year, they, they got paid nothing, most of them. 
Yeah, so they were sharecroppers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they were, you can call it that, but uh, they named it that, but. Yeah, but it was from your point of view, it was something else. So, so what, can I, when was, when did you make your first in, what, what happened that made you want to make this thing? Well, the deal was, see y'all, uh, I was messing with guitars and planking around with them, some ugly ones where Tim took and I really chunk them away, I don't know. But uh, as I was coming out of my shop one night, I hate to tell you this, though. Like I said, if you know practice of cult, you want to send me. And I came in there, something happened. I wasn't just listening at the music and didn't just have the feeling. I was the music and the feeling. Mm -hmm. Then it messed up my head. I had to find that sound. So I started making instruments a little bit better. Started doing this and doing that to instrument, but I never find the sound. Once in a while, it get hold of me now. So it was that, inside of you, the sound? The sound, and I saw a woman on TV. They were interviewing, and she experienced the same thing. Yeah. Way and across it, the world. It wasn't a sound from a song, and it wasn't a sound from the guitar. It was a sound that was just a sound. It was a sound, a feeling, Something like humming, but it won't hum. But it, it controlled at, at probably one but a minute or two. It controlled that whole body. And uh, it, well, what it did, it, it, it messed you up mentally. Because hmm. so, after, after dancing, now, now I, all the music and everything to me is perfect pitch. I can listen to a whole band playing and tell you even. Individually, which instrument I tune, drums I tune, I hate that I can do that. Uh, it's fun and joy. But some of your family are musicians, right, as well? You have lots yeah, of musicians. Yeah, the band sisters came in the back of fields singing songs, and a uh, man over the town over there heard them and started doing a little something with them. And as I got back from where I was at, I took and I found out they were tend to be recording and singing. And when I heard them, they sounded decent. Hmm. So you, so you and your family, all of you hear sounds and think about sounds and are kind of involved in in the making of them. No, they don't hear the sound. They don't even know nothing about it. Uh, all they know is that uh, old pop. He was uh, uh, I forgot what you called them folks like the Mills brothers back then, singing Paper Doll and stuff. But he learned them how to sing each individual with each individual voice, uh, alto, soprano, and all that stuff like that. Yeah, because the thing that was, I heard um, when we were doing some stuff for this film, they sent me some music from your family and from people around you, your area. And the music was incredibly, um, for me from England, the music was really direct and powerful and kind of explosive. You know, it was like really speaking to you. It wasn't like funny, it was like, it was really speaking. And that's the thing that for me was a, a real eye opener. Well, the music really, I gonna tell you when you brought it up. The music they do really means something because most of the song Divine Sisters are recorded, they made them up. More she made the, uh, some songs that didn't make no sense, but they took and uh, worked on them and got them right. And uh, her favorite song, where she sent the made up, one of them with a poem was uh, Blessing Over the Hill and We'll Work and stuff like that right there. All they were was songs about that, what happened to them over yonder in the, on the plantation. Mm. And when you, when you make your instruments, some of them aren't really for playing, are they? They're just, they're, they're more like the idea of an instrument than that you can't play them or you could play them. Yeah, or the most of them, like I told you, some of them that won't finish in uh, Tim saw them as art, which they will, and uh, he took them and, uh, and dealt with them. But some of them that uh, is uh, macabre, as the lady said, uh, Say they can be played. Some of them sound awful good. Uh, did some of them instruments sound better than most guitars that uh, has been made in the past? Yeah, and the and the ones because there's one that has like an arrow and it's like a face and it has teeth and it's then then it's got this like arrow which is like a serpent going up. 
So what's the serpent then? What is that, what is that for you? I don't know which one it is. I would have to see cause of. See, I made so many tell off. And it depends on the mood and everything. The, the one, the African, uh, you ain't come up that one, though. The African voodoo head, I call it my own self. Uh, yeah. That one was made out of, I like to work with old wood. That Wood has a character. Hard to explain, but it, ha it has its own character. You never know it, though, if you're mass producing them all. Mm. You said it got a snake on it. It's got like an arrow and a snake. I don't know. This, maybe I'm confusing two of them, but I suppose the thing for me was it's like a, um, reminds me of somebody saying to me, the devil and the blues, you know, it has a bit of a devil feel, you know, like a kind of powerful feel to it. So. Is would, that, oh, not cutting you off. Uh, continue. Is that, a, is, that a, is, that a, is that something that comes to you when you, you, have you drawn it out before or it comes to you when you're making it or how does that work? It's a strange thing yeah, that you mentioned that. As, you, as you're making the guitar and you sit in that mood, that's what comes to it. I mean, it ain't nothing you make up or nothing you draw up that you just keep right on doing what you see in the mind act, the okay. third, the mental act. Okay, so it comes from the making. It comes from when you're doing it. That's exactly the way it is. I mean, if you and draw it up there, you couldn't do it exactly like it's supposed to be called off. Uh, yeah. It would so, be commercial. So when you do a drawing, the drawing is just what's in your head as an idea. Right. Now yeah. you got it. Yeah. And the, and the guitar piece of wood is what's in your head when you're carving. So the carving and the drawing is similar. Similar. It, it all it all balances out. Yeah, and when you find some wood, how do you get the wood? How does the wood come to you? Well, the uh, the hanging tree wood. I bought some wood from an old white fella, and uh, just as I was loading on my truck, he died a, a year or two later. At this time, he was eighty nine years old, and he was closing out his plantation farm. He was mm -hmm. closing out his farm, pushing down the old houses and. Uh, the barn where he was uh, getting stuff out, and I stopped there, and I said, uh, you got any wood in there for sale? I can make some guitars out, and he said, I might have. I went in there and got some money, laid it out. We come to a price, I paid him, and as I was putting it on my truck, he said, uh, Freeman, he said, you might not want that wood there. He said, a boy was hung on that tree. I didn't pay it no man. I done heard all kinds of stories about wood. I carried it and laid it in the corner, and here come Ken. What are you gonna do with that wood there? I explained to him about my ideas and stuff, and uh, a few weeks later, maybe a month, maybe a month, till he came back, he had old newspapers, he had this and he had that. He said, there really was a guy hung on a tree. Then he goes in and do some detective work, and a woman snitched on her own folks by the same tree. And he had conclusive evidence then that uh, I told the truth about the wood. So I went ahead on and uh, and built some instruments and some of it, it came out like other pieces of this and that right there. And that's the way it went by then, them hanging tree wood. Now the mule slobber trough was a guy sold me a, a block of wood with mules at a eight out in a box thing. And, uh, it came out real good. Mm. And, the, and the guitar that has the shape, the face of a woman that you made a long time ago, and it's very beautiful. It's got this long face of a woman and it's very, um, it's very loving. Is that a woman that you knew or it's an imagine in your head, this beautiful woman, or it's a woman and a guitar is the same thing? How is it for you? Well, when I bought that up, uh, little slab from Kamanas. He was from uh, some kind of African place around uh, Germany or somewhere in that territory, they tell me. But uh, it was there, but it wasn't finished. So here we are at that. And the years passed. He saw it again. He said, you have really messed that up. I said, I have. He said, yes. He said, now it's worthless. 
And uh, so then I went ahead on and enhanced it real good and put me a guitar neck on it. And uh, the wood got to be, you know, monkey paw is extinct in Africa. Monkey paw, so uh, it's got to be super old call. I'm never, I'm 78, and I was a young guy then, uh, pre 20s. Mm. And this man was an old man. Mm. Well, I got it. It was, I did not know nothing about African art. The crude carving on it was where it's supposed to have been, but I took, you know, kind of embellished it a little bit and stuff, and that was the deal on that. Mm. And, and does your family, do, do you know you, how your family goes back in time? You know, you, what your, do you remember your grandparents and you remember your aunts and your uncles and your cousins and you remember the life that they had and that it's different to your life or, or it's all the same thing to you, you don't remember? You know well, where your family came from originally or you have an idea about that? Yeah, they came from... Uh... The, the original ones came from the slave masters. Yeah. And I uh, see uh, Grand Mammy Flo in was a housewoman. And the old master, he got turned by her. And then it, <clears throat> it came on down the line and on down the line. Mm -hmm. But the African guy that they paid to marry uh, Grand Mammy Flo in, name was Cud Duke. And uh, they did that because the white folk were only tell about them uh, half breed children that the old master was getting around there. Hmm. See, they were mixed real bad. You know, and and uh, I can't see how the old master's wife didn't know what her husband was doing. <laughs> it's a wonder if they hadn't killed him. Yeah. So that, so. There's like a mixed history that you know a bit about it and you think, do you think about it or is it just the past to you? I think about it because uh, it created a bad problem when we were trying to go to school in Green County, but uh, I didn't go to school three years, but I heard the taunts and all the uh, racial slurs and stuff they were calling me and my sisters and stuff. And it was a bad time over there. And uh, you know what that folks grows up and, know that we didn't have nothing to do with what the white folks and the black folks were doing back then. And, and does it feel um, like now you have a really strong friendship with somebody that, with the guitars who's white. So is that okay for you that you, you, now you see it like more of a mixture or something or how does that feel for you? Well, you feel all right. I mean, if a guy got a guitar playing the blues and this and that right there, it ain't like it would see back in the, uh, Younger days, because children can be real cruel now. Mm. They have no understanding about people feeling, but as people grow up and stuff and everything, that, that kind of get away from your little taste and uh, you can go on. Mm. No, I know about that because my parents came from another place and I was an artist. And, but when I think about my things that I make, I'm, um, I think about my background quite a lot. You know, I think about my childhood and I'm, I'm a sort of aware and I dream about it. And sometimes it comes back with a bit of a shock and, and sometimes somehow in your guitars, it feels like there's lots of memories buried in the wood. You know, I don't know what, they're not really like obvious, but they're just there. They're it's there. And you said the magic word then, but they are obvious to somebody that, uh, Kind of look at them and meditate a little bit. You understand it, then you do just taking a glance, you know, and stuff like that right there. But if you look at them and uh, kind of meditate a little bit, you can understand every bit of it. Every, all of it is right there. But, uh, well, you're an artist and you understand a little bit more than the average person. Or the average person don't understand that for what they see. Things that happen to an artist, artist is mentally. Mm. You already have a mental picture of what you're going to do, but you just ain't done it yet. Yeah, well, maybe in my case, I often don't have a mental picture, and the picture comes when I'm doing it, not really when I'm thinking about it. You know, I just have to do it, and the, men and the picture comes, you know, or whatever. So, and it doesn't come until I do it, so that's kind of interesting. So a lot of your figures, um, to me, they're quite sad. I mean, a lot of my work's quite sad. So I think that's when I first saw them, maybe that's what I looked at them and I just saw this, this sort of um, internal thing going on, you know, they weren't for anybody but you or they weren't for an audience, you know. Is that right? Do you think, they, they're not made as commissions, are they? They're made just for you, right? Well, 
they out there for people to look at and stuff, but uh, they did come from somewhere in the blackness in there, in, the, in my mind, cause mm. I don't tell everybody that, but being you an artist, you know what I'm talking about. Somewhere in the depth or something other here, what the hell, as that male witch used to call it. And when you were growing up, was there, because I met an artist called Emma Sewell who made a lot of things that were, they're like hoodoo voodoo. They, they kind of have like really strong spirits in them and really strong things to drive out black things like m metal stakes through the trunks of trees and um, wrapping things. And it, was that around when you were growing up or, n or not? Well, when I was growing up, <laughs> the certain thing you couldn't say where well, we sneak and peek through trees and stuff. Mm. I seen the boot, I don't tell everybody this stuff. I seen the voodoo dances and I seen some of the ceremonies and stuff, but uh, it must have not been working too good for them because they had to get up Monday morning and hook their mule up and get back on the phone. Hmm. So do you think that, do, does that come into the things that you make, those memories or not really, or, or this maybe it's something that you just internalized? It probably do come into it, cause see, when I was messing with witchcraft with uh, David and Yvonne Frost, two of the well-renowned witches, I found out that there's another dimension parallel to this one. But I had sense enough to not do like them, cause they kept telling me, said, don't get out of the body. When you can see the body, then say, go ahead on back in there until you learn how to get out and go back. So I got scared of what they're doing left out alone. Hmm. So, um, what about the future of your guitars then? Do you imagine them in, do you imagine them, are they for the future or they're for the present or they're from the past? How do they relate to time? How do they, how do you think about time? There's a red nine instruments and, uh, if somebody want to play one and enjoy looking at them and stuff, that, that's what they put I, I ain't never thought about the future and, uh, well, I think about the past, but the past is gone. And uh, if you get the uh, thinking too much about the past, you get to thinking foolish stuff. So, yeah, I best try to leave the past alone. You know, uh, certain yeah. parts on it. So, when you start a new instrument or start a new piece of wood, is that like a hopeful thing? Well, what it do? Uh, the wood almost controls me, cause I got a piece over there I'm knocking around on that, and uh. The grain was quite disturbing when I first started. So I'm messing with it. And now the grain is getting more comfortable since I understand why it's uh, the way it is. Mm. So living in nature is really important to you, living close to nature. I don't know how you know that, but you sure right. You sure right about that. Things yeah. bother me when people do uh, concerning yeah. the earth, but ain't nothing I can do about it. <clears throat> And how do you hear about that on the radio? You listen to the radio. No, I see them doing it. I see them pausing in their fields and uh, oh, okay. not, uh, they don't till the soil no more. They just pausing it for this and pausing it for that. And the uh, animal won't drink water in the ditch in the spring no more. Yeah. Spring, the spring that runs up free water and everything, animal won't drink. I don't know where they're getting their water from, but they still live. So the seasons, so you're really thinking when you're, and where, where you work, you have like a room that you work in? I did, I was working in a little barn I bought out there and uh, on a farm way, kind of come in my uh, possession. And uh, so Tim came over here and uh, did this shop and everything. And I'm in here now and uh, doing my little thing in here, which uh, the wood don't bother him standing outside the wall and stuff, but it bother other people. So I just tell him, you got a problem with it called music making. Oh, and is it, is it, um, so what about the porch as a space? So you work inside or you work on the porch or where do you work? I built a lot of those instruments on the porch, I turned them to on the farm and stuff, and a lot of them in the barn and a lot of them in the house at night. I get up at night and work on them. Okay. So, and then any and how long does one take to make? Different times for different ones? It depends. See, things are working faster and faster because see at one time I was using hide glue. 
Then mm. I started to uh, try to improve it and this and that till a uh, old clock builder told me from your territory over yonder, Devonshire, Dumonshire, somewhere. He said, uh, they make polyurethane glue. They make this kind of glue. I said, you use them on your clocks? He said, yeah. He said, you just got to use it and not have a glue joint. Said so nobody won't ever see it. So I learned that from him about types of glue. I didn't tell him I already know about the glue joint. <laughs> and and um, do you go and watch music being played and you listen to music or, or that doesn't matter to you? Yeah, listen to music and, uh, and uh, play some music too. But uh, the type of music I would love to listen to all the time would be, uh, well, damn it, one people can play it. Don't even know what the name of the song is. Heard a dude when my sister was uh, singing and stuff, she always would listen to some guy named Jose Feliciano. And I started listening to it and it sounded good, but I never know what it was playing or the name of the song. She told me it was Jose Feliciano. I don't know who it was. And then, is it different if you went 50 miles from where you live, would the music be different? No, music ain't no different. If you go, you can leave here and go all the way down in the Black Bells of Georgia, the uh, De Mississippi Delta, the Louisiana Delta. All the music basically is the same thing, blues. Mm. And the gospel music, you run into some folks sometimes that sing gospel music a little bit of different, but it, the only difference is the tempo. But mm. blues is a regular sound of music, and if you ever noticed it, you never seen a real blues man or blue woman there had a pleasing voice. They always got a raggedy, rasping voice. And uh, when you look at their faces and they singing, you can see the John Brown or song right in their face. Hmm. Them shot hats blues now. So them where they claim, them where they claim Otis Redden and them was singing. Otis Redden ain't never sung no blues. They ain't never been way down wood. When you go down there, down there where they play real blues at, those some tough blues men down there. And is it the same now as it would have been when you were a child or when you were younger? Has it changed a lot or not really? Well, the music they recorded ain't changed, but the people that's playing it now, they, they can't play the blues like the old blues man because they ain't living the blues. You got to live the blues. And is living the blues because people had such hard lives because because of tilling the land is that and because of the way that they were treated is that what is that what is it is to you that's the magic word right there the way they were treated they yeah. tried about they 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 try to sing happy song but they had a few snorts of the cone whiskey and stuff then uh <laughs> the bad stuff come out in the blue yeah and the bad stuff the bad stuff is how they were treated so they, they, they talk and they couldn't do nothing about it. They had no guns in there and nothing like that right there. They had to look at their brothers and stuff, get beat, stomped by mules and you know, horses. And they just, uh, it was a bad time. Yeah. And is it, and you know, some of your instruments are like kind of, um, they're like abstract, they're shapes. They're not really face, some are faces, but some are like shapes. Is the shape, what, how, how do you, how does the shapes happen? Well, and different things are, depending on what shape you're referring to. Well, there's some beautiful lyrical ones. There's one behind your head, actually, on the, on the cotton, on the curtain. It's like, a, has curves and points. And it's like, to me, it's like a beautiful tune of a, of a song. You know, it's a beautiful note, actually. It's like a note of a song. Right. And it's rhythmical. But see, some of them has got that, like I'm telling you about them, uh, the grains on this uh, sugar maple way uh, Sam sent down here. See, some of, it, <clears throat> some of it determines their own shape, but I'm real sneaky now. I have learned how to uh, employ the services of sound chambers and instruments, and that's a sneaky move that uh, no guitar builder ain't caught on to. Well, I caught on to it by accident. And it makes a whole lot of difference in the tonal qualities of the instrument. But it some of them are like, like they're never going to be finished. They're more like a, a thing that the sound might land in it rather than it being played. 
right? But uh, that's the way Tim wanted them. And uh, <clears throat> these were the one I told you about with cast offs. Hmm. See, uh, the one with a snake coming out in that both eyes of the dude, it's cut out for pickups and the neck and everything, but uh, he wanted to take it in that form and uh, carry it on. Some he took in, in the form where that, I uh, like that one was uh, similar to that, that's playable. But some of them, uh, he just carried them on and they, uh, I don't know which one it is, I can't see about that, but uh, yeah. they, they uh, some of them are real ugly and uh, they, they just uh, macabre as that woman photographer see. I don't know what it means. I just fool her. It's like, um, so really it's the wood, it's the wood speaking to you and you speaking to the wood. Is that how it feels? Well, in a way, in a, in a way, as she said that, I don't know what, I don't know what to think about. Yeah, I got to find out what the word macabre means first. It's like a dance. Macabre is like, um, it's like, it's like um, deathly spirits dancing. Oh, okay, so. That's an idea about it. Right, I wonder why she didn't hear me that. But uh, anyway, I didn't let her know, I didn't know what the deal was. <laughs> Maybe you can't understand anything I'm saying to you. <laughs> I understand, I told you, I'd, I'd leave me and Uncle Bill working together. He was from, uh, Kevin Shy, uh, some kind of shy over there. He came over here and married a woman in the military. He was from London, England, or England, London. Yeah. And uh, he spoke with the same accent you do. Well, there you Fine go. Fine fella. He bought a farm over here, him and his wife. Yeah, that's good. Bill MacArthur. His home place was uh, Ireland. Yeah. So do you think about so do some of them, I was just thinking about all the differences in all the instruments. So some of them have different colors, don't they? Like blacks and some of them are like very different tones. So some have like black on top of them, like a sort of scully type thing. And some of them are very honey colored. Is the, what happens with the color then? You sort of decide to change it or what happens? Well, the color is the color the wood is. I don't do nothing by the color. I put some clear on it to protect it from the, uh, environment and that's it the color is that i mean uh you know what color the wood is that's the color it's that but some of them i, have was, I was painting them but uh mr skinner told me he said don't never paint the woods if the wood weren't intended to be painted he put a little clear up there and let that go so he, you listen to the wood you listen to the to the wood yeah we, yeah. we have tonal quality a whole lot of people come if we don't believe it and I tell them, uh, I said, get that sandpaper and sand that piece of wood down. Some of the wood got a little light sound like shoot, shoot, shoot. Some of them got a little sand and sound, sky fruit, sky fruit. I ain't none of them got the same sound. Yeah. And it can be from the train, same tree. And have you, um, do you make things sometimes that, that like aren't um, instruments? They're just like shapes without then they don't mean an instrument to you that or are they all this sound that you never heard or the sound that you couldn't find well the instruments i had their own characteristics you take right this minute my saw would not cut an instrument and the old traditional side uh, the old traditional style of the uh woman's torso without the head and the legs it will not cut it that way it's got a different way it uh it, it demands to be cut and I can't control the saw from doing it. Well, I probably could, but uh, it get to be so much fun till uh, I let it go and do what it wants to. And when you get up at night and work, because I get up at night for particular, I get up at night to think of words and to think of like poems or something. You know, that's a very specific space at night when you've gone to sleep and you wake up or you can't sleep and you get up and you think of making something. It's, it's like a very peaceful space for me. I and try what, to tell what, folks that Hannah and they don't believe it. Very they, quiet. They do not believe that you can get up and uh, special out there on the farm. You can hear birds and, and different things that you don't. And it's so soothing to you just get into what you're doing. And and will do a better job than you will. Uh, In the day. Like, yeah, you know the deal. 
Yeah, so it's a peaceful time. Peaceful time. Yeah. And is it, and do you, what do you do when you're not, so if you're carving something and you get fed up with that, what do you do instead? What's, what do you do when you stop doing that? I lay it aside and all. Then I experiment, I was experimenting with some all. And uh, Cam Brown brung up, I didn't even know it till my homeboy told me the Steinway piano worth a uh, poop of some money. And I made guitars out of it, and God dang, they sound good. That's it. That one really got the best tonal quality you ever heard in your life. It has its own characteristics of uh, treble and bass and mid and all like that right there. And you ain't got to have it fixed. And do you grow vegetables and listen to other people's music and hang out and do nothing? Or what? What's your thing when you don't? When you're not? I, I use books. That's what I, I do. Used to grow stuff, but uh. It got to the place, <clears throat> folks doing all the spraying and then uh, got to getting closer and closer and uh, wasn't nowhere to grow that. So I left that alone and started hanging out in the woods with uh, crashing out there and stuff. And I got taught of that. And now the really ain't too much to do on kind of the, uh, you know what the name of it. So there's I'm people. Finding, some kind of a uh, disease out there where you had to wear masks and stuff. Mm. Somebody yeah. got on the phone there. Well, and we maybe we should wait till they finish their phone call, whatever they're saying. She'll get rid of them quick. <laughs> She's a professional. She, she, you know, they didn't. She knows how to get rid of people. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she's a professional person, and uh, some clowns would be calling. She ain't studying. So all those guitars you made, where where are they now? You made a I, lot. I have no idea. I told Tim not bring no more hanging tree guitars around me, cause that if you mess with them at night, and I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about or not, but yeah, the certain time you mess with them, that they un, it's uncomfortable to be around them. Yeah, and and um, so so really, you you have quite a new life since they disappeared. Well, it's, it seemed like that they just some gone. I mean, you know, some uh, spirit is gone. The uh, I think that man made a post hypnotic suggestion when he said the boy was hung on the tree, and then Tim come up with the conclusive evidence, and then that mentally kind of you know. Mm. It's stuck in there, I think. I ain't for sure. I ain't been to the psychiatrist since I left the penitentiary. Well, you know, when I was, um, when I first came to the South, there was an artist who lived in California who came from Snow Hill, Alabama. And I went to see his work in, in the West Coast in California. And his work looked like the South. So I had to come to the South. And I came to the South where he came from, which is a place called Snow Hill. And there was a slave graveyard there. And it was, um, I met a local historian guy um, and he was making little markers in the ground where he knew people had been, you know, where they'd, and it was a very, very, um, a very separate, different place to the other places around it. So that's a, um, that's a strong thing to have near you, right? Yeah. The lives of other people essentially gone yeah gone but then I, sold in a hole. yeah but then i have a like a jewish background and my family all disappeared and in a way it's like having a hole in you to me it's like having yeah. a place where instead of having a like a, a, a like a lot of people there's a hole so and I think I've, a lot of what I've done has always been kind of because I thought about that, not consciously, but just in the background. Yeah, so, they, uh, they, it, it, mentally, what it get, gets to you, and it's hard to explain to anybody about that part, but uh, that's where it gets to you. Hmm. Well, I'm full of admiration for the things that you've done. I find them very beautiful, but very um, quite sad as well. You might have took. I got a piece over there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something I'm working on now where I can't have it. see. Oh, yeah, I'd love to see it. 
And uh, you're going to laugh at it, so get ready to get your yuck, yucks and your guffaws ready. <laughs> it, it's kind of messed up a little bit, but you can see my intention. I sure thank you, Mr. Dooley. Yeah. Here, here it is right here. Wow. It's full of symbols. See what she can see right there. Oh, there's all yeah. these roots, and there's some um, wow, God, it's um, it's got a it's got life to it. Yeah, that I never understood how come that was so off. It's um, it's uh, that's got some power there. I sure think. Cool. See, the lady, I don't know why, but I was doing. An African lady, and it turned into a lady, in a, and she rest her of her is a snake. Then here come them John Brown uh, uh, Egyptian hieroglyph figures that they used in the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and I don't know why they took and made me put them on there. Hmm. And, and what about yeah. the mandrake then? The, what is the mandrake? Mandrake is a root, a real salt after a uh, superstitious root that uh, people used to carry in their pocket. And mm -hmm. they would anoint it with Van Van oil for seven new moons, and then it's supposed to have some of the mystical power. But it's, it's, it's an image in your thing. It's, you haven't got a mandrake root there. No, I ain't got a mandrake root. Don't you know why I ain't thought about one? And I plumbed. Actually, uh, long as that's been a go, I don't even supposed to know what it looked like, but, and then I can't have C right now, and I just wrote it about an hour or two ago. Okay. There's one guitar that has like roots all the way around, that's sort of climbing around the middle of it. Are those mandrake roots? No, this is the only mandrake root that I messed with a while ago, because I hadn't even thought about a mandrake root in, let's see, been every bit 30 years. Since anybody was digging mandrakes and selling them as a curio. Mm. So you had a lot of experiences in your life, including being incarcerated. Yeah, uh, I kind of was. I thought that uh, messing with the occult, that you could just make some uh, talismans and uh, either a little something to tote in your pocket to get you rich, but uh, it didn't work. <laughs> When I when I met some real witch, when I met some real witch, I found out that wealth is not what motivate them. Hmm. It ain't any wealth that motivate them, cause they were just poor people, and they were from Salem, Massachusetts. They moved from uh, Newburn up yonder to Monroe, where the other witches had migrated to. They probably did, but now cause they were they were old then. So it's in you, all these stories. Yeah, I know some things, but uh, I don't tell everybody because <clears throat> some people don't believe the truth. Well, it's hard to see the evidence. I think I only really understood like the power of the history from Africa and then being in America and having to be secret. And I only understood that when I saw this woman, Emma Sewell's work, which was it just has a lot of power in there and it's hard to negotiate it, you know? If you don't know what it is, it's kind of like it just hits you in the face. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a thing. Do you know about this other woman called Dinah Young? She's kind of incredible as well. She's a woman that lives in Newburn in Alabama and she, she lives in the woods and she just has this beautiful relationship with trees and with nature and she makes things with the branches and she welcomes animals and she's just got this very, very benign, soft, airy presence, you know, she's very poetic. So I suppose I, I began to understand what the wealth of your culture was like, which is, you know, not what I come from. So it's, it's, uh, it's to be, I'm, I bow down in front of it and I bow down in front of the fact that you can call on your spirits to make things. But they, uh, I found out through a little research that uh, what I was doing, I couldn't understand about it. So I went to an old friend of mine. He told me, he said, here's the deal right here. Hmm. He said, uh, white paper practice witchcraft. He said, that's what you was uh, getting into. 
He said, but black people, which I now already know by the voodoo, I just didn't tell him. <clears throat> but I didn't know they were into it that strong until I met David and Yvonne. I did not know that there were actually people up yonder that ran at Salem, Massachusetts, place that they had burnt at the cross, and they'd done some bad stuff to them folks just for saying they was a witch. So they said, I don't know. But, but you the thing about a guitar is it has all these different, um, I mean, a guitar is the strings of the guitar and the wood, isn't it? So the strings have different, each one has a different note. So it has a very, it's, it's not one voice on a guitar, is it? It seems to be, it has many strands to it. I think, it, I think the fact that it's guitars that you make and they have these different strands, for me, that's another fantastic thing about them. That they're, they're, they're not like bluntly hitting in you in the head with an idea, they're just a thing. And they have all these possibilities to be played or not to be played, as to be objects. They're kind of ambiguous. Well, the, uh, as you said, the six strings, that's the way I took and experimented about a half a year on the, uh, the sound chamber. They increased the tonal quality. Like I said a while ago, see, they are. Uh, after that little experience of that, that seeking the sound, see, I can hear stuff other people don't hear. So that's why I be whittling out them chambers and stuff. But uh, uh, Tim, he kind of catching on now. Cause see, with that those chamber, you just got a dead piece of wood, a flat piece of wood with some pickups on. But if you uh, like acoustic instruments, uh, electrified, they sound better than a solid body electric. That's what made me uh, seek the uh, tone chamber. And stuff. Sound pretty decent to me. Well, I love what you do anyway. So I wanted to thank you for being prepared to talk to me. You're um, you're a good man. I sure hope so. I sure try to be. <laughs> well, you're a long way away from me, anyway. It's uh, which is it's kind of like uh, it's interesting trying to cross that space and sort of see where you are because it's not where I am because I'm just in another culture completely. So it's um, anyway, I super appreciate it. And when your work came to London, you know, it was a sensation. Everybody really really got what it said or it spoke to people so you can that's a big thing yeah it is big uh, to me it's real big that somebody interested in it of your caliber uh, most, of, most well educated people they ain't thinking about no uh, spiritual uh -huh. stuff which i might not be saying it right but that's the way my head telling me to say it yeah. Well, I'm very appreciative, so thank you. Well, I'm about to take her to have met you and stuff, and uh, actually I learned something from you. Yeah, well, I've learned something too. I've learned a lot, actually. So, talking to you a lot about, I had a lot of questions in my mind about, about um, what it was you really do, you know. How you, how you, how you bring the imagery from the wood, you know, and now I'm getting it a bit more. You'll get it if you are. Uh, not that you're going to make that guitar. Just get a little piece of wood sometime when you're in the meditative uh, mode and just look at it and you'll be surprised at what that wood can take. You yeah. won't believe what it can take. Yeah, no, I'm sure that's true. I'm sure that's true. The wood ain't dead just because uh, nobody ain't using it no more. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's right. So, well, um, thank you very much for your time. Oh, Kadoka, and I uh, so appreciate uh, uh, chatting with you there. Yeah. Most folk claim they can't understand what I say. Oh, I can understand most of it. Sometimes it's something and I'm like, what is he saying? But oh. most of it, I get it. I'm glad you do. <laughs> <laughs>